Hello, I'm David Healy, and I'm a doctor who treats patients and also deals with the adverse effects of treatment, and I've dealt with thousands of cases. I'm also one of the few people you will ever meet who's seen the actual case records from a company clinical trial and can tell you things like, for instance, say your partner entered a Zoloft trial, a drug that can cause people to commit suicide, and that they poured gasoline on themselves and set fire to it, intending to kill themselves. And you find the case records afterwards saying death by burns. I can explain to you how that happens. Or equally, if you find case records where a child in a Zoloft trial is coded as being emotionally labile or nauseated. And in fact, behind the scenes, they had been suicidal. I can tell you how it happens. Or you may know someone who is in a Zoloft trial and ends up out in the street waving a gun about threatening to kill people. And when you check the case records, you find they're coded as intercurrent illness, whatever that is. Well, I can tell you what it is and how it happens. Um, I can also tell you how Pfizer, 10 years before Zoloft gets launched, uh, can recognize that it can cause people to become aggressive and potentially homicidal. But yet when people on Zoloft kill others and the drug has likely caused them to do so, no one recognizes this or gets to hear about it at all. Now, it's not just companies, academics and the media and probably everyone in this hall, including you know, the regulators if they were here, uh, can be pretty good at coming up with fanciful explanations for why we seem to have problems on a drug. You know, do we really know that thalidomide caused babies not to have arms and legs develop properly? Or maybe, maybe it was a good drug that prevented miscarriages, so these babies who otherwise wouldn't have been born were born. R. In the case of that 13-year-old boy who went on Zola for a week when he changed school and was a bit anxious and ended up a week later hanging himself in the bathroom beside his parents' bedroom, do we really know that Zoloft caused this? Perhaps it was autoerotic asphyxiation gone wrong. I have to tell you, this case was before we had the internet and 13-year-old boys ended up knowing more about sex than I do. But the point I'm coming back to is this that the job of a doctor and a journalist and people here in the hall is to work out what's the most plausible story. Is it the one you're hearing from the person right in front of you as you will be hearing and have heard today? Or else is it the fanciful explanations that Pfizer and FDA and other people are quite capable of coming up with? That's the key scientific mission that we all have. And I've listened to all the people that you're going to hear today, listen to their stories. And in my opinion, the stories that you will hear are more plausible than the fanciful explanations you might also hear.